I am blessed that you have joined me and the others that are participating in this pre-recorded worship service from Maple Grove United Church here in Oakville, Ontario. I'm the Reverend Carrie Stover, and I'm in ministry with those that experience where the spirit soars and the heart finds a home. I encourage you, after watching this video, to send it to family or friends so that they can also experience what you've experienced as well. I would like to acknowledge the many people that have made this video possible today. Dr. Deborah Henry, our music director. Aaron Rosen, our accompanist. Gay Loveland, our scripture reader. Sheila Rowland, who will be leading in the call to worship and the opening prayer. Also, Patty Wanless and Ron McKee, as they join in for our choral blessing and the chancel choir and Pat McKee on guitar will be accompanying them in our meditative music. As always, many thanks to Joan Vinyl Cox, J.C. Burbe, and Al Weebel for the very appreciative uh, technical capabilities that they bring to this so that it can all be possible for you to watch this at home at any time. Just before this service, just a few announcements. If you didn't see them in the e-news, I'm just going to recapture some of them for you. The Outreach Committee brings to your attention the Canadian Food Grains Bank Initiative that, has been in, that you would have seen in the e-news that was sent out on Wednesday. If you are so inclined, we ask you to make a donation. The federal government makes a match of four to one. For every dollar that we give, the federal government matches it by four dollars. This is an initiative by many churches around the, the globe that help the hungry. Please support us if you're capable. Now, there will be a book discussion group that will take place on June the 7th at 7.30 p.m. The 21 things you may not know about the Indian Act. Please join Katie Joachim and Sandra Onyafrik in a thought-provoking discussion about this book and what it says about our past, present, and future with the Indigenous peoples of Canada. Again, I'm going to direct you to the e-news or the website for more information. Now, congratulations to Paula Warden, Judy Arnott, Janice Eklund, for your 15 years of dedication to Kerr Street Ministries. And as well, the NCN, Neighborhood Care Network, is looking for help with dental care and also help with affordable housing. Contact Gay Loveland, who you will see later in our video, who's our scripture reader, or Jean Ann Davis for more information. That information was sent in the e-news. It's also on our website. And so I draw your attention to that. Now, as we come together for worship, we respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee nations and offer our gratitude to the Métis and other First Nations of these lands for their care and teachings about our earth and our relationship to the land. May we honor these teachings and work toward understanding and reconciliation. Let us all prepare our hearts and homes by listening to Aaron play Franz Liszt's Il Penseroso, The Thinker. Thank you. 
the beautiful arrangements of fresh-cut flowers on the chancel table are in memory of David Kennedy, given by Carol Kennedy. We remember David along with Carol and the family with so many cherished memories, especially for Carol's service here at Maple Grove United Church. We give thanks to God for the blessing that David was in so, with so many that knew him and cherish their memories. Now, I light the Christ candle today as we welcome the, the light of Christ into our lives for this sacrament of Holy Communion service. The light from this candle burns brightly to remind us that we are connected by faith by love, and by his presence in our lives. I invite you to join in the call to worship as led by Sheila Rowland. We gather with joy, for Easter continues. Like spring blossoms breaking forth, the power of resurrection breaks through in surprising ways. God's grace enfolds the church in strength. Like an attentive gardener, God tends the needs of all creation. Let us worship God, who makes all things new. We will praise and give thanks to God, who brings growth to each and every life. And now, let us pray together, as led by Sheila Rowland. Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, you are the vine, and we are the branches. Your love is our strength. Your energy is our joy. Your attentiveness is our hope. You nourish our faith so that we can bear fruit in many ways. You promise we can dwell in you because you are dwelling in us. Fill us with the love you know as God, ever three and ever one, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Let us lift our voices in singing our opening hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, from Voices United 271, and the words will be displayed on your screen. Let's come together now in a time of opening our hearts and confessing our sins before God and one another, as we trust in the grace of God to make all things new. I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession as it is displayed on your screen. Merciful God, we confess that we have not lived up to the calling you first whispered in our ears. We have gone astray. 
We have been weeds of isolation and thorny vines that carry no seed, caring not for our brothers and sisters as we steal their sunshine and prevent their growth. We are guilty of serving our own needs rather than contributing to the whole. We are not connected to you. We are not connected to one another. Forgive us, connect us, enable us to be of service to all. And let us pause for our own silent confession. Amen. There is good news, friends. Christ came in the flesh to abide with us. God's love still grows in this world. He is the vine grower and we are the branches. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Let us grow and flourish in his name, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. In his name we pray. Amen. And before the current stay-at-home order, I would drive to see my older brother and his partner. And as I drove along the QEW and past some of the vineyards in the Niagara region, I wondered how are those poor vines ever going to produce another crop? There seemed to be nothing at all on the vine to help the new growth at that time of year, which was approximately six weeks ago. Have you ever been close enough to a vine in some of those vineyards or other vineyards, wherever you may have traveled in this world or this province, to see how they are pruned right back to the main stem? And then, it's with time and nature that it takes its course and with the warmth of the seasons, the long days of sunlight, that there's then this harvest of grapes that produces some of the best wines that come from the Niagara region, some of the best wines in the world. And all of this is almost in our own neighborhood. I am the true vine, as Gay just read for us from the Gospel of John, is the last of the seven I am declarations of Jesus recorded only in the Gospel of John. These I am proclamations point to his unique divine identity and purpose. Now, Jesus said, I am the true vine to the closest of friends gathered around him. In this passage, we find that it will only be a short time before Judas would betray him. Yes, this reading perhaps should have come before Easter so we would understand the context. And in fact, Judas has already left to do his infamous deed. Because that would have, we would have read that in the Gospel of John chapter 13, verse 30. Well, Jesus was preparing the eleven that were left with him for his pending crucifixion, his resurrection, and his subsequent departure for heaven. He had just told his friends that he would be leaving them. We would have read that too in John's gospel in the 14th chapter. And he knew how disturbed they would feel. But he gave them this lovely metaphor of the true vine as one of his encouragements. As it is an encouragement for us in our current context as well. And Jesus wanted his friends, not only those 11, but those of all time, to know that he was not going to desert them. Even now in our pandemic time, when at times it feels like we've been deserted. But those 11 had gathered with him, and they knew, or he would know, that their, his physical presence would no longer be with them. His living energy, his spiritual reality would continue to flourish and sustain them just as the roots and trunk of a grapevine produce the energy that nourishes and sustains its branches while those branches develop their fruit. In this reading that Gay read for us, Jesus wants all that follow him to know that even though we cannot see him. We are closely connected to him as the branches of the vine are connected to its stem. Our desire to know and love him and the energy to serve him will keep flowing into us and through us as long as we follow and trust in his ways, trust in his teachings. If the branch becomes detached from the vine, then there is no nourishment or growth potential. Now Jesus went on to remove any misunderstanding about what he meant in verse 4 that Gay read. He said that no branch can even live, let alone produce leaves and fruit by itself. 
Cut off from the trunk, a branch is basically going to die. Just as the vine's branches rely on being connected to the trunk from which they receive their energy to bear fruit, Jesus' disciples depend on being connected to him for their spiritual life and the ability to serve him effectively. The fruit we produce is that of the Holy Spirit, as found in Paul's letter to the Galatians, which are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. There will be a quiz during the coffee hour on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Our source of life and spiritual fruit is not in ourselves. It is outside of us in Christ Jesus. For Jesus is the vine and he encourages us to be the branches. Now, we can live and live rightly and serve him effectively only if we're connected to him in a faith-love relationship. Faith in his promise, the everlasting peace, and the love to follow him, his ways, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, perhaps during this pandemic time, what has all this time taught us? And for me, I've looked at it and looking at this scripture reading as a time to do some pruning. Personal insight pruning so that he can make us one with him. To bring ourselves into right relationship with Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Rather than fret and wonder how we are going to make it through the pandemic, we've been given the time to prune ourselves and connect, or perhaps reconnect, depending on our relationship to the vine. So we, as the branches, may flourish as followers of the Him, the true vine. When I think of pruning away those parts of me that do not serve me or the vine, I, I start to embody on how prayer, meditation, and giving thanks bring me back to the vine. I find nourishment from the sacred text. I find hope in the good news that has been shared with us. I find peace by acknowledging that I have never been alone, that God has always been with me. This is making me one with the true vine, the one that said, I am, seven times. To reach out and show our family and friends our love is bringing new life to the branches. If there is no love, if love is not shared with our neighbors just as we have embraced ourselves with love, well, we do not bear the fruit of the vine. And abiding in the ways of Jesus is to be able to find ourselves living with and in, an, in abundance with God's love, the vine grower, and with the nourishment of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in a few moments, we will enter into our time of remembering the sacrament of Holy Communion. And perhaps it's during this time that you'll find that you'll do some pruning and finding nourishment from the true vine. It may be from the bread element that you have chosen to remember what Jesus said to those that gathered with him by giving thanks and then breaking and eating, doing all of this in remembrance of him a setting of our heart, our way to connect deeply with the true vine for the gift that has been given to all of us, making you as one with the vine. Or may, you may find the connection with the vine by remembering through the cup that you will pour or you already poured a time to give thanks and then drink in remembrance of him 
and the gift of love given for you, making you as one with the vine. The pruning that we're invited to do is to let go of our past and find our own growth in the true vine. For when I prune away all that does not serve me in his name, I then find that I'm at peace. And that is where I find God's love in my whole being. We are the branches needing pruning so we can find growth in the true love of the Spirit and in the love that has been given for us. Thanks be to God, the vine grower, and to the true vine. May, he always, may we always abide in him, for he is always with us, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the prayers that unite our hearts for those that are near or far from us. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, we draw near to you in prayer this day, trusting that your love changes lives and your resurrection brings hope into the world God loves. You have drawn near to us and walk with us through every challenge. We are so grateful for signs of hope, even in the midst of the pandemic, for the vaccine distribution and recovery plans, for generosity and creativity offered in so many surprising ways in our community. As we lay before you the concerns on our hearts today, Draw near to those we have, that we remember, those that we hold dear to our hearts, and bring the comfort of your, your gift of love to where it is needed. We lay before you those who are in the news headlines this week, our provincial leaders, those who put themselves before the needs of others and situations in the world where justice and renewal are needed. We lay before you those who are in hospital or long-term care and all those who struggle with illness, pain, or health burdens of any sort. We lay before you families under stress, relationships that are strained, and friends and neighbors in need of reconciliation. We lay before you people seeking food, homes or jobs in these difficult times, and those worried about economic recovery from the pandemic. We lay before you racism and acts of discrimination that happen daily, and those who lose out on opportunities because of their identity or fear violence in their daily lives. Gracious and loving God, we believe that you hear our prayers and will be faithful to our requests and concerns. Help us seize the moments you give us to reach out to our neighbors and show them the love you have to share. And so we pray the powerful words that were taught to us, our Creator, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to this table. For the sacrament of Holy Communion, this has been prepared for you as you've prepared your elements at home as well. In the United Church of Canada, we do not exclude anyone from this wonderful gift that has been given to us, the followers of the way, the truth, and the life. We come to the table not just as individuals, although that may be how you're feeling in your homes, but we do come together as a community by sharing the bread and the juice, your tea and cracker, whatever it may be. Christ the vine makes us one with him and with each other. Let us enter into our time of remembering the greatest gift given to us. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Like trees, let us aspire to raise our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the God of vines and branches. We give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. The words will be displayed on your screen. Holy God, you are the creator who gave us vines to climb, trees to provide shade, and fields to run and play. You are the source of our life. All life flows from you and connects to the river of your purpose. Your creation is fuller and enriched each day with your glory. Your love flows, eternally chasing us to the sea. Our love has failed we have splashed up on dry banks you did not intend for us. Yet you still part the waters. You still pour out your baptismal love. We join together in that rushing water that flows from the heavens to the earth saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. You, Jesus, flow as the source, the true love. You are the vine. We are the branches. You taught us that when we connect with you, we grow. When we are not connected, we wither and die. You know what it is to die. You are the seed that was planted. We gather here at his invitation to break bread and share the cup and proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. You give us the faith in your church, a growing, living plant of your creation. Christ is risen. You give us the hope of life everlasting. Christ will come again. On the night in which Christ died for us, he took bread, wheat that had grown in the fields gathered and prepared. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, connecting each of them to the bread. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Grapes from the vine crushed, poured out freely for all to share. He gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, inviting them to be the vine. Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new relationship, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of brokenness. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
Let us continue to pray. Creator God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of the field and of the vine. Make this cup and this bread be for us the body and blood of Christ Jesus. Connect your branches to your vine so that all may grow in your love and grace. All this we pray in the name of the vine grower, the vine and the spirit of life within. Amen. If you're following this at home, and I hope that you're doing so, please say what is displayed with me. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. saying, This is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this juice, we proclaim his birth, death, and resurrection until he comes again. At home, just as it is here, all things are now prepared. Let us eat and drink together for the strengthening in the faith and for the sake of our world. Now, as you share at home or if you are alone at home, as you take your bread, say, this is the body of Christ given for you. And the appropriate response is, Amen. And the same when you drink from the cup, whether it be juice or tea or coffee. This represents the cup of salvation, the new covenant, covenant given for you. And the response is, Amen. As you partake at home, as I partake here of this table, Dr. Deborah Henry will play, Abide with me. The words will not be displayed, and as after you've taken the elements at home, you may want to hum along. The body of Christ given for me. I invite you to join me in the prayer after communion as displayed on your screen. Let us pray. Creating and living God, you have graciously accepted us as members of the vine, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and with the elements at your table. Send us now into the world in peace as branches from the mighty one 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you in all that we think, say, and do. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to join with me now as we sing, and especially the chancel choir, if you'd like to sing along with them, as we sing our sending hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, from Voices United, number 664, and the words will be displayed on your screen. As you are the branches that are connected to the vine, may the strength of the wind and the light of the sun, the softness of the rain and the mystery of the moon reach out and fill you. May your heart be peaceful and your word be true. May you seek to learn. May you learn to live. And may you live to love. And may you love always. May the eternal love of God, the everlasting peace of Jesus Christ, and the blessed comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join in with the chancel choir as they sing, Go Make a Difference. And after that, I invite you to stay and listen to Aaron Rosen play the Sonata in G Major by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Blessings on your week.